wait, you thought we moved in with my parents to pay off debt? Well, you would be wrong because the reason we came here initially had nothing to do with debt at all. That was actually just an added bonus. So today I'm going to go over the whole story of why we moved in with my parents and why we are still here three years later and what it means to be part of the sandwich generation. And if you don't know what the sandwich generation means, don't worry, I'm going to explain it. I really should get some wine for this video. That would make it a lot easier. Hey guys, it's Wendy Valencia, my husband Mauricio and I and our daughter, our seven-year-old, have been living at my parents' house for the last three years. And on a recent video, She's on Top, whose channel I love, I'm going to link them down in the description box, I love how like pro-female and promoting other businesses and everything they are. You should really check them out. Very, very high-end channel, phenomenal videos. They recently posted the following questions on one of my videos. We would love to hear more about your decision to move in with your parents. How did you do it? How did you approach them? How was it for Mauricio? So today I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to give you all the details, the good, the bad, the ugly. Not the really ugly. You don't need to know about that. It all started back in Mexico. I was stationed down in Mexico. I was working as a diplomat at the U.S. Embassy down there. And I had been there for multiple years with Mauricio. And Mauricio was also working as a diplomat at the embassy there in uh, Mexico City. And Mauricio's sister and her husband were actually living with us. They had come up from Colombia and we were paying Mauricio's sister to actually be our nanny because we were gone so much during the day that Melina was just a little baby. So they moved in with us up there. So while I was there, I actually got medically curtailed out of Mexico City. Y'all know I have dystonia. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's really painful, really horrible. My neck is paralyzed from here all the way to here. It's, it's a whole big long thing that they couldn't handle in Mexico. And so I tried to stay as long as I could, but I ended up having to leave. And so I had to medically curtail out and it was a very rapid transition that we were not planning. And I didn't get to pick where I went. I gave a list of places I was willing to go, but, but I ended up getting told I was going to come to Washington, D.C., so I got my notification of where I was going and I had 90 days to get there. So I knew we were coming to Washington, D.C., but Mauricio was actually in the process for a good government job, a really good one. And it was something he really wanted to do because that's what he knew. It, it was in law enforcement and he was very excited about getting this job. And we figured when he got that job offer, based on the, the place he applied, we would probably get sent to Texas. So when he got the job offer, I was going to have to transfer to Texas. So I told my parents, hey, we're coming up to D.C. I don't expect us to be there more than like five or six months can we stay at your house for a little while until we figure out what's happening? And then, you know, if we have to move to Texas, then we will move and just go straight from your house down to Texas. And they were totally okay with that. My parents are always very amazingly accommodating and helpful because, you know, I got my generosity from somewhere. It is definitely from my parents. My parents are like the most generous people in the world. So my parents were actually ecstatic that we were coming because because we had been living in Mexico, they hadn't gotten to see Melina very much. We left the United States when Melina was two months old. And so they had hardly seen Melina over the next four years. And so they were super, super excited that they were going to see Melina every day for multiple months. So yeah, they were, they were very happy and they were super happy to even get to know Mauricio better because truthfully, my parents like Mauricio better than they like me. I know it. I'm okay with it. I've come to accept it over the years. He's just a more fun person than I am. So we got here and we didn't hear anything about Mauricio's job and we didn't hear anything. And so we just kept waiting and waiting and the time got longer. And eventually he got notified that he was no longer in the process. And it was truly heartbreaking. I actually did a video 
right after we discovered it was life changing for Mauricio and it was crushing. It was crushing. It took him almost a full year to get over this. It, it was like a death in the family. It was awful. And so we reeled from that for a while. And we were, we did not even really discuss getting out on our own. While we had been waiting, we had discussed that if he got stationed up here, then we would go ahead and move out as quickly as possible. But once once that happened, we didn't really discuss it again. And then about a month later, my father got extremely ill. My daughter had pneumonia, and then she gave the pneumonia to my father, and it became very life-threatening, very life-threatening. Um, it's kind of a miracle that he made through it. it. It was really rough for a long time. And so when Mauricio and I had recovered from the loss of the job, we were then taking care of my father and helping my mother take care of my father. And my mother was gradually starting to decline physically. And so she couldn't help as much. So we were pretty much at that point for about the next year, we did everything to, for, um, cooking, cleaning, you name it, we did everything. And we helped take care of my dad. And it was it was a long year. And in that time, Mauricio did get the contractor's job. And, and this is where we get into the sandwich generation of that. And if you don't know what the sandwich generation is, it's the generation in the middle of the sandwich. That would be my generation who is helping take care of their parents and helping take care of the kids. So my parents aren't so bad off that they can't do anything. They certainly are mobile and independent and everything, but they need help. They need assistance. Once my dad was back on his feet, my mother's, her health started to decline. And I don't want to go into too much detail about my mom and my dad, because it really isn't my story to tell. It's their story. And they've made it very clear. They don't want to be on my channel. <laughs> they don't mind me doing it, but it's, their lives. And so I am not going to really discuss it in much more in than these very vague terms. So after all of this, we realized that we could not leave until their physical situation improved. So we waited and we waited. And after a time, my parents came to the conclusion that they did need to move into a multi-level retirement facility and a multi-level retirement facility is one that has everything from independent living all the way up to full nursing care. And oh my goodness, when we went and started visiting these places, some of these places are amazing. Like I told my mom to forget it. I wanted to move in because they have like five-star dining, beautiful apartments, luxury apartments, swimming pools, the whole gamut things to do. One place even had like a wine and cheese happy hour every evening at five. I was like, how do I get on board with this? But these places have a significant financial impact. They require a huge amount of money up front. And additionally, they have a monthly payment and the monthly payment gets higher and higher depending on the level of care you need. And I know many of you are going to ask, why can't they stay in this house and we stay here and take care of them? And that is an option, but there are stairs in this house and, and based on current situations, stairs are difficult. So years ago, we actually told my parents that we wanted to buy their house if they ever considered selling it because we love this neighborhood. The school district is phenomenal and it's just a fantastic area, but the houses are crazy expensive. And this neighborhood is like the cheapest of all the area. So this neighborhood's the only one we could really afford and it is next to impossible to get into this neighborhood. So they told us that we will, they would either rent us or buy, we would buy their, their house from them. And right now we legitimately don't know which direction that's going to go because a lot of it is going to depend on how much they need to put down in the place that they're moving. And they won't know that until the floor plan becomes available because there's all different levels of floor plans and the price ranges like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So for the, the 
the payment down. So if they get one particular, they might be able to do it without selling the house. If they pick another one, they might need to sell the house. So we don't know if we're gonna be buying or renting their house. We've agreed that we're gonna go ahead and stay to help out for as long as they need us until they get into this facility that they've chosen to go to. So what does that mean for us financially? Well, first, we're still gonna pay off the visa and the car next. Absolutely. And then I think probably what we're going to do is we're going to save up maybe about $20,000 and it's going to be maybe 30. I'm not really sure. We got to run the numbers, but if we buy the house, we're going to have to pay closing costs. If we rent, we will have to do any and all repairs. That's kind of the agreement that we have with my parents because ultimately the house will be ours someday. We would have to pay for the repairs, so we will need to have a significant pile of money for major repairs. So after we have saved up whatever amount of money we've decided we're gonna save up, then we will tackle any other debts that we have left. So I realize that'll probably freak a lot of you out that we are actually considering buying a house while we are on a debt-free journey, but there are so many moving parts to this situation and the numbers actually hugely work in our favor. So it would be insane financially for us not to buy this house if everything goes according to plan. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.